anybody could win 197 pounds this year. I, I, I've said that last year, and I think it re- reigns even more true this year with the amount of upsets that have been going on. Because last year, I had kind of said that, and there were some interesting upsets between the like number three and number eight ranked guys. But, you know, Noah Adams was kind of that clear number one. But this year, he's he's been upset. So I think 197 is the most open weight class to win this season. There are a large amount of undefeated wrestlers still with Miles Amin, with Eric Schultz, Cordell Norfleet, Greg Bolzak, Tanner Sloan, Rocky Elam, and Chris Kober. Each of these guys still undefeated on the season heading into the postseason. And it just anything could happen with these top 20. I, I wouldn't say that about every single weight because I don't necessarily believe that. But at 197, it's, it's something that I do believe. So I'm going to go through each of these conferences. And some there are three main conferences I think are super important to note. But I'm going to give you a little bit of something on each of these. So what's going on at each of these weight classes as I break down some of these crazy triangles that have been going down? Because there's... Just a lot here, you know, in, in the Big Ten. There's so so much going on with Miles Amin first. You know, like, let's talk about Big Ten. Miles Amin of Michigan making his comeback, bumping up a weight from 84 to 97. Eric Schultz, who you may argue should be the number one ranked wrestler right now at 97. And I would actually probably argue in your favor, even though Miles Amin is the three time All American bumping up, but Eric Schultz has been just a thrill to watch this year. Undefeated with wins over other Big Ten guys, Caffey, Warner, Davidson, or Davison, excuse me. And he's been putting up points like crazy. He had a 20-plus point match the other week. Eric Schultz is crushing it this season. And, and Amin at the top, I think, is going to be interesting because Amin has had some close matches. You know, he's back back on the saddle. He's back on the match. But he's had some close matches already. Like his match against Michael Beard, which he he had won it, but I mean, Michael Beard was looking pretty tough. Gavin Hoffman, he actually won both of those matches to start out the year, 8-5. to five. And he hasn't really wrestled any of the other guys who have bumped up, actually, from 184, which is kind of funny. You know, Miles Amin bumping up from 84 actually hasn't even wrestled a Bonacorsi or Cam Caffey, who each of these guys have bumped up from 84 as well, but hasn't wrestled them yet. So that's the interesting things going on there with the Big Ten. Now, what else is going on at 197 pounds? And, of course, you do also have Jacob Warner of Iowa, who has two wins over Schultz in the past, all within two to three points, which is interesting. Lucas Davison of Northwestern, Cam Caffey, Michael Beer. I mean, each of these guys are going to make for a fun Big Ten championships. In the Big 12s, the biggest stories here, and there's still one conference that I think has the biggest stories at within the ACC, but first, the Big 12. Stephen Buchanan of Wyoming, the sophomore, 8-2 and two this year. Back-to-back wins over Noah Adams. Actually, he did have a loss to Cordell Norfleet in between that time by Pan, but he had two wins over Noah Adams, which originally there were some people saying that Buchanan, oh, maybe it's just a little fluke, maybe whatever. It wasn't convincing enough. I mean, I said from the beginning that this was a convincing enough victory for him to say that, yeah, he, he convincingly beat the number one Noah Adams, who had one of the longest running winning streaks in the NCAA up to that point last week. But now Buchanan has beat him twice. Noah Adams, of course, here, 10-2 and two on the season. His two losses coming to Buchanan. Tanner Sloan of South Dakota State, the sophomore, 13-0, and 0, and has been on a lot of people's radars. He's number 12 in the country right now uh, and is riding a nice winning streak, but he hasn't wrestled any of those top guys. That's kind of why he hasn't cracked into that top echelon yet. A.J. Ferrari, the freshman phenom, is another interesting story who has been just wrecking his way through the, the year. He has a loss to Noah Adams, but if your only loss is to the guy who was the previous number one, that's not too bad of a resume for that season. How he's going to do in the postseason is going to be interesting. And Jake Woodley is another interesting guy to note here. But my favorite, my absolute favorite conference at 197 this year, and you may have already guessed it, but it's the ACC. 
I mean, th- th- there's another big triangle. You know, I already mentioned some of the triangles going on here beforehand, but the biggest triangle is Isaac Trumbull, who beat Nino Bonacorsi, who was a top 10 guy. Trumbull, not yet a, a freshman of NC State, beat Bonacorsi a pit. Bonacorsi then rattled back that next week to beat Giallo of Virginia, even though Virginia upset Pitt in the dual meet. And then Aiello has a win over Caden Russell of Duke. And you may say, okay, well, what's the big deal there? Well, Russell pinned Trumbull. The, the triangle is just a complete mess. And, and maybe it's more than a triangle because it's more than three guys within this. But anyways, there, there are no All-Americans here between these guys. But multiple qualifiers who just haven't had a chance to prove themselves yet within the ace or within in the national tournament. Now Bonacorsi should be interesting to watch. Seven and one on the year. He is the junior and has wrestled in the national tournament, but again, like I said, just hasn't proven himself yet. And then Isaac Trumbull on the other hand is just a freshman and just literally has not got a shot at a postseason yet. This would be his first postseason he's able to wrestle. And that's why I think it's going to be super interesting to watch them wrestle, you know, in in the ACC, watch some of these teams. And then we have to talk about the rest of 197 and why this weight class is so open. So, you know, I mentioned Miles Amin. You know, he he's the number one, but could be upset. Could anything could happen there, especially with Schultz and, and Amin. And there's nobody, I think, that, that is a clear number one here. You know, Buchanan with a win over Noah Adams, that positions him to be a top-ranked wrestler. Sloan undefeated. The Bonacorsi, Yayello, Trumbull triangle, and then the rest of these guys, a few undefeated guys in each of these weights, in each of these conferences. Cordell Norfleet of Arizona State is one to note. Who is people have been saying he's been prime for a breakout ever since last year, prime for a breakout. In the Mac, Rocky Elam of Mizzou and Greg Bolzak are both undefeated wrestlers and could face off in in the Mac finals. And Bolzak was actually my dark horse pick last year to win a title at 97. He's currently ranked number 11 in the country. I'm looking out for him to be on the podium this year. In the EIWA, there's a Jake Jacobson, JT Brown, Jacob Kozer, another triangle kind of happening there with those guys. Uh, with Jacobson beating Brown, Brown beating Kozer, Kozer beating Jacobson. I mean, it's just another triangle. And then Chris Kober and the Socon, who is undefeated still. 197 is in my opinion, the most open weight class this year. Who do you think may win the title? If you like this clip and are looking for more wrestling news and discussion, I recommend you check out the full Fanco Wrestling Show podcast, which is live on this YouTube channel every single week. You can click here to subscribe to be notified of new and upcoming videos, or you can check out the Fanco Wrestling Show on your favorite podcasting platform to listen on the go. Stop stalling and start listening today.